Mark has Brownlee made a review of a new product called Humane AI, and I thought that it was a fair and balanced review, but the title was that it was the worst product he's reviewed so far, and it just sparked outrage. People thought that his review was too negative. They thought that the negative re review was unethical. Mm -hmm. And he's being accused of bankrupting a company and ruining, ruining like billions of dollars of effort, putting people out of jobs. I we do reviews as well, and this really resonated with me. I have a lot of empathy for Marquez, and I want to talk about why I think he did the right thing and why I appreciate him doing the right thing, a little bit about our careers as reviewers, the behind the scenes, and what really went down with Marquez and why people are mad at him. And I want to bring up that there, there are some real pitfalls, and negative reviews can be done unethically. For sure. But first I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you need your own website or a portfolio, a store or a gallery, you can make it happen with Squarespace. We both have our photo portfolios there, but we can book clients there, we sell prints there, and it's really easy to do. It's also free for 14 days, so you can go there, try it out for 14 days, you're going to be like, oh wow, this Chelsea, she really knows what she's talking about. And then you can buy it and get 10% off with the coupon code, which is also Chelsea. I should be able to remember that. C-H-E-L-S-E-A. All right, so here's the deal. There's this product called Humane AI. It's like a clip-on camera technology projector. I don't even really, I watched his review and I still don't really know the point of the product, to be honest. Yeah, it clips on your pin like a, a little bit of flare. Yeah. What if you worked at the TGI Fridays? And you can you can talk to it and ask it. You can questions. be like, what am I looking at? And it will be like, there's a car in front of you. And you could be like, what time's the basketball game tonight? And it'll be like, hell if I know. No, I'm just kidding. It'll give you <laughs> it'll give you feedback. Um, but he did this review and it had a title that was very polarizing, which is that it was the worst product he's ever reviewed. I watched his review and I thought it was very fair and balanced and thorough and well researched and he did it in a really professional and respectful way I thought. More respectful than I think I could have been so I think I learned something from him. Yeah, it, it was an excellent review but the title itself was simplified, right? Like he talked about the design of it, the potential of it the uh, some technology breakthroughs that it has, things I've never seen before. Like you can hold up your hand and it projects a little screen onto your hand and you can interact with it by moving your hand or swipe. And that's, that's just a cool system for interacting with something I've never seen before. It's, it is innovative in those ways, but in practice, in the product that they're selling now, it simply was not ready, obviously not ready. Yeah, um, I think he had a compassionate view as well because he said, that he saw where they were going with it, but that it was a victim of its own future ambitions because it just wasn't living up to them in the moment. And that's really tough. People responded by saying he was using clickbait and negativity just to get his own views and was bankrupting a company and that he had some responsibility to consider the health of the company. Right, this product, which clearly is not ready for prime time yet, could evolve into something if they had ongoing support. But he, in a single video, with millions and millions of viewers, could have been strong enough to kill that support and killed the future of this product. Let's, read, let's read some of these comments. Okay. Uh, I get the feeling you didn't fully understand the actual purpose of this device. This happens a lot. You make a review and there's something that you don't like and then people just tell you you don't know what you're doing. He very clearly knows what he's doing. He's been doing this since he was like 15. Uh, you could have worded it better. You possibly bankrupted this company now and prevented future innovation by them. Um, I don't think he's responsible for how a product works, but we can get into that. They refused to pay the sponsorship money in Marquez and Mr. WTB said, I'm gonna destroy this man's whole career. That, well, that's just libel, right? Like that's slandering his reputation I mean, and without any reasonable information, it's not true. It's just making up things because you don't agree with him. But um, there is the potential for product reviews to be unethical for sure, because some people will just make clickbait. Some people will say anything to get views with no ethics. And this is YouTube, there is no gatekeeper. You know, it, this isn't, like, Consumer Reports has a very specific methodology for how they test things. They don't accept sponsorships or even advertising money. Things are double-checked and triple-checked by different editors. Uh, 
th- that's not what YouTube is. YouTube, you can be one person and publish a review based on your feelings, and you might be biased. You might hate them. You could have a beef with the company and make a review that slams it, and that happens for yeah. real. Okay, but I feel like, do you think that it's within his right that he could have said, man, I tried this thing and I just hate it. <laughs> is that okay? Yeah, I think that's okay. Assuming that he's not being colored by a sponsorship or trying to extort the company to sponsor him. Because what I actually thought is that people called his title clickbait, but I actually think that his title was the heart of what he felt and then his whole review softened that. And when I watched through the review of this, the tech was really cool. It was Mm -hmm. cool to look at. The first half of his video, I was like, dang, this looks awesome. But when he showed it being implemented, I totally understood his point of view, which is how many times has there been cool tech where you buy it because it looks good, but when you go to use it, it's not easier than anything else you're doing. It happens in our industry all the time. It does, I know. And I felt like he gave it an honest chance. I thought that he stuck with it based on his review. He showed how it worked. And so I do believe that he thought that the product just wasn't good. Yeah. That's okay. I believe him and I think he was sincere. But at the same time, in the broader scope, these are things that happen. Everything that people are accusing him of, those are really things that happen in other reviews to other reviewers. Okay, this is what gets me upset about that, though, is that I've noticed this. When there's a negative review or when people say there's a clickbait title, which, by the way, like, don't blame the player, like hate the game, because YouTube makes you do that. Mm -hmm. But nobody cares when people do that for positive reviews. I see so many reviews where people just, I think it's more clickbait to say this is the best thing ever and you don't mean it and also it's not and you didn't actually do a review, you just read the spec sheet and said what the company wanted you to say and you go on your merry way, like. Oh, I think that's a hundred times worse because if you write a negative review, then nobody buys that product. If you write a positive review without proper validation, then consumers who need to work possibly months to save up enough money to buy the product, they take that months of effort and buy that product for something that they won't be happy with. And they were essentially misled by you. And to me, that's, that's just like a serious crime. Uh, well, I, so I agree with you that I think it's worse to mislead the consumer, but I've heard this argument before Marquez's video. People feel like reviewers owe the company. Mm-hmm. And they're saying he's ruining a company, but he's not responsible for the quality of the product that the company brings to market. No reviewer is. And I found it really interesting that people have all of this empathy for a company, but they're not interested in their own interests. You want people just lying to you? And I, when we were talking about this, I told you about how I used to see toy commercials, and my grandmother would be like, that's junk, that doesn't actually work. And I wouldn't want to believe her. And she'd just bring me to Toys R Us and I'd get the toy and it would be junk. It's like, we don't want to hear what we don't want to hear. We want to believe something is good. But it's not always true. Sometimes we got to be Chelsea's grandma and just drop the truth bomb. (laughs) Well, you're not supposed to shoot the messenger, right? But But the people who are blaming Marquez... (laughs) Oh, whoa. You pronounced his name so many ways. Marquez. The people who people are blaming Marquez and not the company for making a crap product. And we have been here because there was a time when I did a review of travel tripods. And first I vetted everything by looking at existing reviews to make sure that people like them. And then I got a collection of them and we took it on an actual landscape trip. We spent a couple of weeks traveling around relying on them every day. Four photographers, like three or four tripods sort of alternating between them. And it was at the end unanimous. We all hated this tripod and well, one of actually, us would just end up hand holding it. Actually, it was like the stuck jam jar situation. I think I was the first person using the forbidden tripod and I kept swearing at it and everyone was like, I'll use that one. <laughs> and then they'd take it like they thought they were going to do it and then they'd be like, mm. and they'd be like, the next person would be like, I got it, I'll fix it. Went through all of us, none of us liked it. Yeah, it just kept slipping and it falling over. It was faulty, over. it broke a camera and we contacted the company and asked them if we were doing something wrong and we weren't yeah i have like hundreds and hundreds of words of correspondence where i'm trying to solve these problems while we're out in the field and they're like no no everything that's the way it's supposed to work i'm like and so we published the review and then uh what two years later uh one of our peers who also worked with that company said that the owner of the company told him that we were responsible for him having to lay people off that our review 
cost people jobs. Yeah, of course, I would never want to do that. But if you try to work with a company and you give them feedback before your review goes live, they don't take it. I don't know what to do about that. And also, they updated and changed the products so that they don't do that anymore. Yeah, they did improve their products. Uh, and I, I hate when I am the cute quality assurance team. Well, so, like I shouldn't be beta testing stuff. It should already be refined by the time it ends up in my hands. So that's my other thing about Marquez's review is that people are saying that he's too harsh. I actually thought he was really fair and balanced and offered really good feedback for the company. And we have not worked with many companies that take feedback very well, but the ones who do are able to improve their technology. And I feel like if this company wants to make a better product for the next revision, they'll take his feedback, his honest feedback, the free consultation of like the top tech reviewer in the world. Mm -hmm. It's free. He gave your company free consultation. Take the feedback and do better. I don't understand why people think it's the responsibility of the reviewer to pretend a bad product is good. That makes zero sense to me. Because some people are more closely connected to the corporations than, than the consumers. Yeah. But you and I, we're on the side of the consumer, the person saving up their money. And I'm sorry if people lose their jobs, but that's 10 or 100 people instead of 1,000 or a million people. I don't even believe that people actually lost their jobs because that review. It wasn't even a big review. Like, no. come on. That was just being silly. We're going to talk about what goes into making a bad review and, and how you can sort of avoid being unethical. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace gets you your own custom domain, like your ChelseaNorthrop.com or NorthropPhotography.com, which is so much cooler than just being Gmail or telling people to DM you on Instagram or something, because you get a space that you own, that you control, your branding, your colors, your fonts, no advertising, no ads for competing services, which literally happens on social media. Yeah. You can sell products to clients. You can take appointments. Whatever you can imagine starts at squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Get a free trial. No credit card required. After you love it, you can use the coupon code Chelsea and that will save you 10%. But what if people don't know how to spell the name Chelsea? It's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. It's so easy. Wow. You just I, rattled that off like you just knew it. I know how to spell my name. It's crazy. So let's get into talking about the ethics of a review because people are criticizing Marquez. I don't agree with them in this particular instance, but I do agree with the idea that a review could be unethical. Yeah. And I think that it goes both ways. I do think someone could not test the product properly, not ask the company if they're doing things right, and then just launch into a horrible review just because they feel like it. That would not be fair. I saw in the comments a lot of people saying, hey, his review is actually pretty balanced, which I totally agree with. But here's the thing, most people don't watch the whole review. His review is like 22 minutes and people have an incredibly short attention span. Most people just see the title yeah. and draw their own conclusions from that. And I've had my own experiences with that, making videos like Micro Four Thirds is Dead, which was a complex and nuanced business video, uh, but had a very simple title and people remember the title five years later. Nobody remembers the detailed business analysis that went into predictions that would unf unfold over a period of time. And that's what's happening here with this. People are upset about the simplified reductive title, but you don't really have a choice about that on YouTube. You have to make a simplified reductive title. It can only be a couple of words. I really just think that part is what it is. If you don't have the attention span to watch the video, I don't think you have any right getting worked up about the title. But people definitely write they comments do. without ever having watched the video. Yeah. I get that all the time. I think people also imagine that he wanted to make a negative review. I can't read his mind. I sh like, I don't really know what he, what he wanted. From my experience, I can say a negative review is far more difficult to make and way less fun to make. In fact, we are avoiding reviews because they're going to be negative and we've just not. <laughs> we don't for everybody to... asking for my Nikon ZF <laughs> review. Every day I wake up thinking I'm going to record that review and then I think, oh, maybe tomorrow. You know why? Because it's you don't partially like... negative. And not people are going to say. But I know people are going to hammer me for it uh -huh. and it makes me put it off. And that's bad. I think that part is actually unethical. Yeah, it's it's unethical. bad for me to hold back a negative review that for a product that people are buying. Well, that's the thing. When you make a negative review, first of all, you can't just say something negative and not substantiate it. So Marquez in his review had to 
show us what he didn't like. Mm -hmm. And that means that you're doing more testing and you're doing more filming and you have to do more storytelling. So it's just far more involved. You also um, need to validate it with the company if you have any ethics at all. You say, hey, this isn't working. Is it just my copy? Am I doing something wrong? Oh, yeah, but we've also, we know a lot of reviewers. So we've talked to people who have gotten five copies of a product and none of them work. The sixth one works and the review is stellar. So like, <laughs> you don't even know what's going on behind the scenes. It's a very difficult business and nobody wants to make a bad review. It, negativity also breeds negativity. Yeah. And we're seeing this here. So he says it's the worst product he's ever reviewed. I believe him, even though people think it's clickbait. I don't think he, I think he wanted it to be a good product. And now he has a bunch of people accusing him of bankrupting a company. He doesn't want that. No, that's got to be stressful for him, even in his position. Yeah. It's not fun, right? No. It also damages your relationship with this company. And it could scare off other companies from sending him future products. I speak from experience. my own experience. You don't make affiliate money. So it's way easier to say, I love this, everyone should have one, and then make a whole bunch of money from your affiliate links. That stinks. We made bad reviews before, and like we've still put the affiliate link for like, if you still want to do it, at least we'll Sometimes get... Sometimes people buy them anyway. <laughs> um, you're also not getting a sponsorship from that company. So you're walking away from a bunch of money because you didn't like a product. And it actually, when you think about all these things, it makes me understand how many positive reviews there are that just glaze over so many glaring problems in products. Well, well one of the things is that if you make a bad review, that company's not going to talk to you anymore. And uh, we've burned a lot of bridges. And we're, we do that because, well, first of all, we are stupid. Yeah, very stupid. And, um, but bad also, business people. <laughs> also, uh, we're on the spectrum, I think. <laughs> so, but I think the other thing is that we don't have other people really relying on us and I I really feel for people who have so many people working underneath them that like that's a very that's a much harder decision to make um, but I'm the only stupid idiot that suffers just me and you when, <laughs> when we make something like that so and, and it hasn't been easy you know you when you get a product last people just want to see the first reviews they don't necessarily care about the relationship to do that so uh, anyway my bigger point being, it's not advantageous to make a bad review. Um, can I just tell a story about a little DJI drone <laughs> that we reviewed? Yeah. Um, this product was revolutionary. It had features we had never seen before, like the gestures. gestures. You did not need a controller. They were trying to make it so anybody could use it. You could launch it from the palm of your hand, just set it aflight, and then wave it around to take selfies or whatever. Mm. And it was, it was literally dangerous. Actually, it damaged our cabinets using it in the way that they showed in the ads. It flew right into the cabinet and put a dent into it. It powered itself into sand, <laughs> just instantly oh, yeah. killing itself. Oh. And it could fly into people and hurt them. It was yeah. a, the, one of the worst products we've ever seen. Actually, it reminds me of this product a bit because it looked really cool in the ads. Yeah. Like, I wanted it. I thought it was an awesome idea. It was an innovative idea. Um, but it just didn't, it wasn't implemented well and it didn't work well and it didn't end up making much sense. So our review was practically a parody. Like we just showed all the problems that we had and contrasted it to the, uh, uh, the commercials. <laughs> but I watched the reviews of other tech reviewers and all of those on launch day, all of them, 100% of them were glowing. They just showed how great it worked. Now you could ask, were those positive reviews correct or was our negative review correct? And that's hard to say because we talked about our experiences, but I'll say those gestures are not part of current DJI products. They completely dropped it. They scrapped the They also the idea. made a series of firmware updates to improve that particular product that did solve several of our problems or remove features that simply did not work. Yeah, I actually think that that one was a liability because we did have, we believed that it would work. So we had our, at the time our daughter was young and her friends and it, was, it really could have hurt them. Uh, once I saw how it didn't work. So I, um, I felt justified in our negative review, but it also made me really suspicious of all the positive reviews that were causing like probably millions of people to buy this absolute well, piece of shit. But I don't think that that's fair, Tony. And early in our career, I felt like people weren't being upfront all of the time, mm. but I don't think you can imagine what they're thinking about a product. S certainly we know, we've seen behind the scenes enough where we know things get cut because they don't want to say something negative. But yeah. I also know there are people that are thrilled with everything. They're excited about everything. Even if something doesn't work, they think it's cool. Like, God bless those people. They think everything is great. And I think they make reviews and just think everything is great.
You're right. There are those people. So if I something don't... doesn't work, they often think, oh, it's probably me. I'm yes. probably doing something wrong. Yeah, I don't think it's fair to assume that they're being misleading. I just think that they didn't uncover certain flaws. And that's all we can say. Yeah, you could also say maybe we're just bitter mother f <laughs> and, But I will say I am a more critical person. I'm critical of myself. I'm critical of my work. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, oh, it's just, it's not even an emotional thing for me. It's not like I get mad. I just am like, how does this work? And does it work? And if it doesn't, I don't see anything wrong with saying that. An another good reason to be afraid of making a negative review is that you, you piss off the fanboys. So yeah. this actually steers reviews for companies that have fanboys. And like DJI is one of those companies. DJI people are pretty zealous. And the Nikon fanboys have been coming after us. The worst fanboys on the planet are definitely Tesla fanboys. Yeah. Um, and we had a Tesla Model S and we don't review cars and so we never made a review of it. But at one point, uh, it was in a bit of water and got bricked. And we just wrote something about it on Twitter. And Business Insider approached us and wanted to write a whole article about our experience. Well, first of all, people told us we were idiots and it was our fault that our car had problems. Yeah, even though every other car in the street was fine. And then Business Insider contacted us and wanted an interview about it. And we were like, oh, no, I'm not going to get beat up emotionally by all the... Fan voice. Yeah, I remember I said, I I'll do it, but you can't put my name in it. Because they will <laughs> they will come to your house. Like, they will dox you. I, they are insane. Yeah. And they said, well, no, we it's about you. We have to put your name in it. So I said, no interview Hell then. No. So that is definitely a time when negative, but perhaps useful uh, criticism of a product was, was hidden from view. Because we, personally, were just afraid of the blowback yeah. from the fanboys. It also wasn't really our, we're not car reviewers. No, it's not so our it was like, expertise. I also felt like, oh, I didn't want the blowback, but also I don't want to talk about it unless I'm going to do a very in-depth analysis of the situation, and I didn't feel like doing that. Mm -hmm. But so. it would have been good clickbait. <laughs> yeah, well, I also value my mental health. <laughs> so one final question, which is, who do the YouTube product reviewers work for? I thought Marquez had an awesome response. A guy... The guy that tweeted that he had so much power that he potentially was going to ruin this company and that he had to think about that. And, and Marquez was like, I think we have different ideas about what my job is. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you get to de define that. So when you're a reviewer, who do you work for? Do you work for the manufacturer and you're trying to make them happy? Do you work for your sponsors? Uh, if you have sponsors, yes, obviously you're doing work for them. Or do you work for your viewers and the consumers? And I think that as a reviewer, you get to choose who you are serving. But different reviewers choose different answers. Yes. Like, I believe we both strongly work for the consumers in any of our reviews. We always think, at least I always think, is this a good way for people to spend their money or is somebody going to regret it? And that's why anytime I find a problem, I feel the need to really articulate it, not to stop people from buying it, but just so people know what they're getting themselves into. So there's no surprises for somebody who spends their hard-earned cash. Does it make you want to cry when they don't listen anyway and then they come back and... So many people just ignore It's like, okay, you said it doesn't autofocus well and I bought it, but now it's not autofocusing well. What should I do? It's like, you should have listened. But to the manufacturer, <laughs> The one who has a PR person spending time with you. Maybe they're bringing you to an event. They're sending you products. They, they're incurring costs, right? Because they expect to make a profit on that. To the manufacturers, these reviewers who are getting these early releases are a form of advertising. They're a form of marketing. Um, yeah. And so they do get kind of pissed off when it's not effective, especially if it actually hurts sales. That's pretty crushing. Well, they can them. always find someone willing to say what they need to be said. Yeah. And it's not really all that black and white. It's often just, uh, they put on a lot of fanfare and tell you what something does and you can believe them or you can test it and see if it's true. But in the comments down below, like, tell us what you think. What sort of reviews do you look for? How do you know if a reviewer is biased or unbiased, ethical or unethical? How do you know? Well, nobody really knows, right? Because I try to buy stuff online and I'm just befuddled. Like, yeah. Who is this? What is real? What actually works? So many, like I used to read Amazon reviews and I, I just don't believe in those. No, I, I just basically don't believe any reviews now. <laughs> I go through so many reviews uh, and, and, and I, don't, I can't tell if something is advertising or not. In fact, I'm more likely to believe negative feedback than a glowing review. 
Yeah, knowing everything that I know, I often don't know how to navigate it. But I want to just sum it up by, again, I'm going to thank Marquez Brownlee because I think he knew that this would bring some difficult feedback to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he did what he thought was ethical and right and that he did it respectfully and professionally. And, and I can't wait to see the next company he burns down. <laughs> well, that was the joke, but like, no, I just really, I have a lot of respect for him. And he's not a YouTuber I've watched a ton of. I've watched a couple of his videos um, and he's inspired me like every time. He's just very professional and measured and I think that's cool. Yeah, nothing but respect. If you want to be professional and measured and cool, well, too bad. Someone already did that, but you can have a Squarespace. <laughs> That's our sponsor. They make this podcast possible and they also host our website. So if you want to try it out and see what all the fuss is about, go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. You can try the 14 day free trial. And if you decide you want it, use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. Thanks so much for watching and we hope to see you next time. Bye.